Hello, everybody. My name is Kayla Duncan. I'm an Ohio licensed massage therapist and the owner and operator of Northeast Ohio Clinical Massage. In the world of trigger points, the pectoral muscles are known as the cardiac copycats due to the fact that trigger points in this area can present with the same exact symptoms of a heart attack, even when the heart itself is perfectly fine. Heart rate fluctuations, difficulty breathing, and throat dysfunction, including difficulty swallowing or speaking, can all be related to active trigger points in the pecs. In this video, I'm going to teach you a little bit more about the pectoral muscles and demonstrate a few self-massage techniques that I find to be very effective for treating trigger points in the pecs. If you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button for me. It lets me know that you like what I'm doing and that I should do more of it. Subscribe to the channel for better access to future content. My comments are always open for your questions. All right, let's learn some more about pec massage. The pec muscles are located on both sides of the chest. I'm going to demonstrate one side, but it's important to treat both sides, even if one side may be a little worse or better than the other. Despite being in the same area and both being pec muscles, the pec major and pec minor are two different structures with two different functions. So I'm gonna break it down and take it one at a time. I'm gonna start out first with the pec major. Now I'm gonna apologize in advance because I'm going to be doing some palpating and a little bit of identifying here on my shirt. and probably going to be fuzzy in my microphone. So just bear with me, see if we can get through it. So the pec major is this superficial muscle right here on the chest. You can just put your hand on your chest. Pec major is that first muscle right underneath the skin. So this muscle is very easy to identify, very easy to access. Pec major runs along the sternum, along the clavicle, and all of these fibers come together and twist before connecting here to the arm. So that is what makes pec major prone to trigger points. You have multi-directional fibers and that little twist right here in the muscle. So there's a lot of stress, a lot of strain. It's a dynamic convergent muscle. And you know, we do a lot that actually impacts this area, most especially breathing and our posture. Since the pec here attaches to the arm, it is going to have some action over the arm, especially internal rotation. Internal rotation, you can spin your arm, you spin it out, you spin it in. When you spin it in, is internal rotation. And you can feel it, you can see it. That rounds my shoulders. These muscles become long, this muscle becomes short. This is the pec major. So when you're in a rounded shoulder posture, that muscle is chronically contractured and that will encourage the formation of trigger points. So rounding that shoulder back out and elongating that muscle will help to stop the trigger points from forming. Now this can be complex for people with breathing issues. Um, women with large chests get a lot of issues with the pectoral trigger points. And you know, it's, it's tough because we get into these postural habits and sometimes it's just lazy. If we slouch, we slump, it's a easier to do this. And then if you have that heavy front load as well, or if you're just already having breathing problems, and if you can imagine this decreases the capacity here in the chest, and it will perpetuate breathing issues and breathing dysfunction. So this is that rounded shoulder, contractured pec posture. We really wanna open that back up and elongate these pec muscles. And it, as far as massage, it's just very simple. If you work on the insertions of the muscles, where they originate from or where they go to, right where the attachment sites are, this is where you get a lot of pain from tendonitis, is at the attachment sites. So if you work the attachment sites, this is, I'm right on my muscle here where it attaches to my arm. I can follow just right under the clavicle. And then you can go down the sternum too. Now I can actually, you can actually see it. I can feel in between my ribs. Like that, that's my rib. And right here I am in between it. This is pec, and this is pec, and I can feel down my next rib, and that's pec too. And I can take that all the way down 
So right here, this is the bottom of my sternum. That's my xiphoid process. This is right here above where the diaphragm goes. Again, I am thin-chested. This is easy for me. It's fairly easy on some males as well. Uh, it's a little tougher if you have more breast tissue here. So if that's the case, you can simply restrain the breast tissue. Just move it out of the way. Move it out of the way and get in those ribs because that's really what you want. So that's the attachment site for this pec major. This is where it's going to get sore and be sore and right up under that clavicle. Now I can feel the difference between these singular fibers and this twist right here. And I can really feel that muscle. Sometimes I like to do the side lying, like when I'm laying down at night. So I'll be laying on the shoulder and I'll just press into it. I'll press into it or I'll work my knuckles right along that clavicle. And even grasping and putting pressure in my thumb is right on that twist. Another really good, really easy way to access pec muscle, lift your arm. Just lift your arm and this whole flap comes out. And I'm right in my armpit here. And I have that firmly grasped in my hand. And you can work down and feel that meat in there. And I got this whole muscle in my hand. And I can go up here to where that knot and where that twist is. Now, this is pretty, it's definitely advanced. You're getting into your armpit here. This is just quite a grasp. For some people, this area is going to be very tender, sensitive, sore. Work slow. Low and slow, don't push it. Sometimes if you just hold, I really like static holds and releases. You can even work deeper into the tissue. Just let it melt. Let it sit and then advance. And you can work in deeper. Now this I'm going almost like straight through. But if I go underneath and kind of up more that way, that's where pec minor is. Pec minor is located deep to the pec major, so it's actually underneath of this flap here. And this is where knowing your anatomy really comes into play, because when I get under here and I work towards that muscle, I can feel the ribs. And if you feel your ribs with your fingertips, oh, there it is, there's my pec minor. Because you really got to get in there. Pec minor attaches to the ribs. And it also attaches to the scapula. So again, with the rounded shoulders, when you have rounded shoulders, these muscles become elongated. So that shoulder blade is not in the right position. It's stretched out. It's putting pressure, excuse me, on that pec minor. So that just a lot, anything with the chest, with the breathing, and even with the shoulders, which is where that posture comes into play. So again, this is it's an advanced technique to get in there, this area may be very sensitive. One of the best ways to treat the pecs is just work on your breathing. Uh, make sure that you're breathing properly from the belly, fully expanding the chest. At the end of your breath, big open chest, big open chest, because if your chest is compressed, you can almost feel, some people report uh, shortness of breath, they can't catch their breath, they can't take a deep breath, their ribs feel very locked, they can't expand their ribs, a lot of different complaints in this area, and it's generally related to a lot of this pectoral muscle dysfunction. Now, and that's what I'm doing on this side. I can feel my ribs. I'm working these attachment sites. I'll work along the clavicle. Well, I like to do it. It's easier with the opposite hand for the grasp. Sometimes it's easier with the opposite hand, too. Like I said, when I do side lying, I do my opposite hand, and I will use my fist for compression, but whatever is going to be comfortable for you. It's really, you got to, so I like that. I like grasping and because I'm right there, that's right where that knot is. And you can pinch. And I know this is tough for your hands. I, I definitely understand that. But these are, techniques are very effective for this area. Even if you can just get a couple minutes. Oh, that was a good one. I, I felt that one in my heart. <laughs> oh. So, you know, go low and slow. So I, I get in there. I, I get crazy with it. Just sometimes trying to grab stuff. And, and I like the pincher. I like grasping, grasping, shaking. It's a really good release. And just holding. If you hold, 
you hold a spot for between one to two minutes, the tissue is going to change. You're going to have a lot of releases. So it's going to do some good for the tissues. So I recommend treating both sides. If one side is worse than the other, I like to start with the good side. You're going to give positive nociceptive input to the body by working on the good side, letting it know what normal sensations are supposed to feel like. And then you can work on the bad side, work out some of the abnormal sensations, work to balance those neuromuscular loops, and just kind of get your body more even, more symmetrical, more functional. Um, again, perpetuating factors, posture, breathing, large bust. You just got to work against it. Keep your chest back. Goes for ladies too. Sometimes a breast reduction can be helpful, but obviously that's very invasive. If you can just work with what you have, work to develop your muscles, especially these muscles here in the back, you know, keep your head back, chest open, shoulders strong, and you can, you can either fight against it or not. You know, posture, sometimes we get into habits, things get lazy, easier to do this. But if you work on this, It'd be hard for a while, but eventually that'll feel easy too, especially if you're releasing the area and not making those trigger points come back as much with lifestyle posture habits. Whether you struggle with grip strength or just want to save your hands, know that you can utilize a massage tool when self-treating for the pecs. Historically, I've always recommended the back knobber tool for trigger point massage, and I still recommend the back knobber to all of my clients. I do, however, prefer to use a different massager when working on the pec muscles. This is my tennis ball massager. It's just three tennis balls tied up in a long sock. I keep this with me in my vehicle. That way, when my back and shoulders get tired and stiff from driving, I just pick this up, throw it right in between me and my seat, and lean into the tennis balls. This will give me static pressure right on the trigger points and areas of pain and tension, and I essentially get treatment during downtime, and I don't have to do much for it. You can reposition this tool, get both sides, even let the balls drop down and sit it like this against my shoulder blade, and I've also had really good experience using it here on the chest. So to use the tennis ball massager on the chest, you can just press right into the muscle. And right here, I am right under my clavicle. And it gets a little tricky down the sternum because of the ribs. If you're on a rib, it's probably not going to feel very good. You're not supposed to massage on bone. You're massaging muscle. So if you feel like that's a rib or if it hurts a little bit, just go up or down. And you should notice that that feels a little more comfortable as you get in between the ribs and not on the bone. You can take the ball and roll it in little circles. And you can also take it and just roll it across your chest. Let's see if I can show that better. And this gives a tool can really increase the pressure that you get from using your hands. Ah, I can really feel it over here on this side. This is my left side. And so I'm going kind of across these muscle fibers because the pec, remember, is going like this. So I'm sort of working across these fibers. It's a neuromuscular massage technique called cross-fiber friction. And people like to do cross-fiber fast and irritate the tissues. I don't. I do cross-fiber very slow. We're just going across the fibers in the opposite direction. And you can do the same technique, but do it in the same direction. That's a little tender up there. So this one I'm going up and down. Last time I was going side to side. And you can get in there and I mean you can roll it around side to side, up and down, hold it, and just roll. So this thing here, and I feel all of that right here in my throat, even in my eye a little bit. <laughs> But it, I can feel it, and sometimes when I get deep, especially over on this side, it's almost like I can feel it in my heart, or like I can feel a flutter in my chest, even into my throat. I've really discovered that these trigger points here in the pecs, these are the main trigger points for satellite points in the throat. So between the traps and the SCM and the pecs. Those are going to be your three main areas that generate trigger points into the head, into the face, and into the throat. 
So these trigger points, when they go into the throat, these are your talking muscles. These are your swallowing muscles. So people will have issues with those symptoms and just can't really, can't really figure it out, can't get any relief. Some people don't have any reason for why they should be feeling that way. And it's the same on both sides. When I get right in here, I can just feel it. It's a very deep feeling. When you're on a trigger point, it's going to have some form of referred pain. You're going to feel a symptom or sensation in an area other than where you're pressing. I'm pressing here, and I, I can feel it here and all the way up into my throat. And that's where I get a lot of my throat symptoms, is straight down my sternum. Straight down my sternum. And I, I have difficulty swallowing, difficulty speaking. Ooh, I think this side might even be more tender. So when you find a tender point, you can just press and hold, or you can gently work over it. I said I like static releases. Press and hold for a minute or two. You're going to feel that tissue melt and dissolve. It's a really great release. So honestly, you don't, you don't really have to do much to treat these trigger points, especially if you have a tool. And so when I treat the ones in my back, I do it when I'm driving. I just put the massager back there, lean into it. So you can do it in a wall when you're, our bed's right against the wall. So sometimes, you know, when I'm sitting in bed at night, I'll just put this right behind me and just sit against the wall. And you can get your trigger point treatment that way. It's really not laborious at all. But you want to feel those areas where you get that sensation. I feel it, I mean, all in here and right in my throat. And I've seen it in my clients and I felt it in myself personally with the treatments that I have done in here. These are the main points for trigger points in your throat. So if you're having issues speaking or swallowing and you have anything going on with your chest, Breathing is a pretty big issue. Uh, heart rate problems are definitely people who like, so they feel like they're having a heart attack. You, you get the left-sided pain. You have everything that hurts, but your heart is fine. Those are pectoral trigger points. So if you work on this area right here, you can release this area right here, which is a little safer. You know, I don't mind. I'll get in there. I do a lot of massage on my neck. I mean, I get deep. I get in these muscles. But I have found that working the pecs, even just for a little while, is oftentimes more effective at relieving those than getting in there and working them directly. Now, indirect work can be very powerful, and so can working with a tool. Trigger points in the pec muscles can cause some disabling and uncomfortable symptoms. Self-massage is a very safe and effective way to manage and treat the trigger points. Left untreated, trigger points will always get worse. It is possible to see a licensed massage therapist and receive professional pectoral massage. However, there's nobody in the world that can change the way you breathe or the way you hold your body except for you. Identifying and eliminating perpetuating factors will keep the trigger points from coming back. Treating them will help to reduce and eliminate them. It's a perpetual cumulative cycle of healing. I hope that you guys enjoyed the information in this video. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. I look forward to hearing what you think and how much pec massage is helping you.